Greetings. Welcome to the How We Do Digital Ministry Podcast. I'm Christopher Harris, founder of Faith Growth. You can find us at faithgrowth.com, where we help our church clients build their digital ministry presence and engage with their communities online. On this podcast, I have a conversation with a church leader and ask them to share how they do digital ministry in their community or their context. Today, I'm talking with Paul Schmidt, the owner and creative video strategist for Uno Dos Media. Paul, please introduce yourself and tell us how you do digital ministry. Well, thanks for having me on the show. First and foremost, Chris, good to see you, see you. But, uh, but to just, uh, just to follow up what you just said, I am the owner and creative video strategist for Introduce Multimedia, and um, we do a ministry digitally in several different ways. Uh, my company is built to really work with nonprofit organizations to, to figure out uh, all the different strategies when it comes to um, the digital realm. And that in- specifically includes video, live streaming, and podcasting. And so with that, that is my background. And that is what we've been really faced, especially in this pandemic year. Um, we're still in the pandemic. Let's not, you know, dance around that. We're still in it. We have not gotten out of it. So, um, so that is where where we find ourselves so um yeah so that's where we're at cool well yeah well kind of speaking of the pandemic um you know there's no way around that like you said uh the church went online and caught up uh, about 10 years that you know 10 years worth of technology in the last 12 months which has been uh, awesome to watch um have you seen you know I like to highlight, you know, really good examples of digital ministry. What is something unique or something special, uh, surprising maybe that you saw this last year as far as uh, digital ministry is concerned? Well, I'm not sure it's surprising in general, but surprising for a lot of the, maybe the church audiences was the amount of viewership Mm -hmm. that they were getting. Um, And I think that that, I mean, Take, for instance, my church. I go, I attend Bethlehem Lutheran Church here in Lansing, Michigan. Um, when they started doing the live streaming aspect of it before we were asked to not be in the church at all, um, you know, we did a few, a, a couple of streams and we were really amazed at the amount of engagement right off the bat. In fact, it, it looked like we had digitally successfully had the same amount of people that we normally had at at a church service. And then it grew from there as well. And then I heard that same case from other, other churches that I talked to. So I think that was the big thing. Um, And that's actually something that's bled over into other uh, realms when it comes to the live streaming aspect and, and the Facebook lives and all that stuff. I think that that's a situation that we'll probably talk a little bit more in depth about it later on, but I really think it's a, it's a, a moment where you can't ignore that type of reach um, and that type of audience engagement uh, because you are really reaching and touching people where they are at. Um, And they could be in Florida and discover your, your service there and vice versa, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's finding and it's, you're able to find that message that you're looking for that community on the fly. I mean, it doesn't have the same as face-to-face, obviously that's not, but you still have the ability to um, not have that uh, feeling of not being a part of a community when you can just dive in virtually and experience something for the first time and, you know, and see what you like. Well, it's a little bit lower of a barrier to entry, if you will. I mean, thinking about if I have to get up on Sunday morning, get dressed. If I have a family, kids or whatever, we're going to have to get all that arranged, the dog fed, the kids in the car, you know, um, it, you know, that can be hard and exhausting for some people, especially when you don't, if it's a new experience and you're not familiar with the community, um, and so it's easy to me, it's easier to like, hey, I can kind of check it out and see if this might be a place I would want to go uh, right. in the future. Um, that's yeah, no, that's it. I mean, I've been excited as well with the amount of viewership and just kind of like what 
this opportunity to reach these people that, I mean, some of them are your own members because we couldn't be in the building, but some of it is, you know, like you said, people from around the country. And uh, that's, which, and I also like that, you know, I've said for a long time, the church produces a ton of content. We just have always said, come to us to get it and receive it. Uh, as opposed to now, it's like, hey, we can put it out there and begin those relationships. So tell me, you know, I know you've worked with a few churches. I mean, what, uh, <clears throat> as far as if they want to do some more live streaming and some engage, you know, engaging video like that, what, uh, any basic tips uh, that you might have for them? Because I know video is your thing. For people that don't know, I mean, Paul, and, uh, in, in, you know, we're both a member of the ELCA, uh, and Paul has been a volunteer in the ELCA in many different levels, helping, helping with video from anything at our uh, huge youth gathering we have every three years to the ELCA Youth Ministry Network um, and lots of other places as you've been involved with helping with video. Uh, so I know you're one of our leaders in the church in this area. Um, and so what tips might you have uh, for, um, you know, churches as they're getting more creative with video or individual congregations, I should say? The, the tips really uh, revolve around um, it's, it's really a broad range, but to narrow it down is just really, really diving into, uh, first and foremost, just trying to get used to being on camera and understanding that and addressing the camera appropriately, because for the simple fact is you getting used to that at this point in time will carry over because we probably will will our churches will probably think about doing a hybrid situation mm -hmm. and so making sure that your point that you're just as engaging in person as you are online and vice versa is really about because you're reaching a wider audience so you really got to get into that into that mode of really um uh, talking directly to that camera talking to you know uh, that way you don't lose that. I mean, I know that I'm talking in, in a situation at this point where everything's virtual, but carrying that over for when we do have more regular in-person events because, or in-person services, because for the simple fact that uh, this situation is not going to stop and you don't want to lose that momentum that you have built to, uh, due to what I just talked about in a little bit about that reach, um, you want to make sure that you still have that type of feeling of engagement with your audience, both live and virtual. That's one of the biggest kit tips to don't, don't, don't drop that um, <laughs> in, in essence. So well, when, I, I think that's a good tip because I mean, I'll tell you something I'm concerned about. So during pandemic last summer, a friend, uh, suggested I go check out her church's online worship because she thought they were doing it well, which they were doing it so well that I kind of said, that's my church now. Um, and I've been attending a church that is in New York. I'm in Dallas, Texas. So I've been attending a church in New York city for the last, um, I, you know, three quarters of a year. It was sometime last summer when I first uh, popped up and it's been a good fit, but New York's requirements are so have been, you know, like they can literally have almost nobody in the building together. So they've been live streaming from home and they have one person at his house kind of producing, but you know, you talk about that intimacy of the camera. I mean, yeah, like I'm always two feet away from whoever's speaking. They're always looking right at the camera and I know they're talking to me and I am a little worried when, if they go back into the building there and all of a sudden this camera's way back here, are they going to forget about the camera? You know how? And so I think yeah, that's a very good point. We got to, you know, start looking at that camera as like, it's, it's not just this weird little box. It's, multiple people, you know, and maybe in some case, fifties, tens, if not hundreds of people that you're kind of talking to, and you're going to have to interact with it as well as whatever may be right in front of you. So that's, uh, I don't know that that's going to be easy, but it, that's going to be our challenge. You're right. An important challenge. And that's the other thing is, it's like another thing that you, uh, folks in the, the church realm will have to think about is, creating new positions that are more media based. In other words, like you just said, you had, they had a, uh, this church that you're, you're working or attending quote unquote yeah. attending. Um, they have somebody who's 
producing at home while somebody else is doing the content, having that that media producer as well as a camera person to maybe make sure that whoever should be addressing the camera is addressing the camera. Those are extra positions, whether they're volunteer or uh, paid staff that have to be thought about as part of the crucial um, aspect of, of having, you know, a live slash hybrid slash virtual situation with your church services. So these are, these are crucial positions to help the, the pastor because the pastor has to worry about the content. Um, and that's what they should be focused on. Um, and so you have this team of people that can help. I mean, every, every situation now, whether it's a business, nonprofit, church, and so on, are going to, have, are going to become media companies officially. They should have always thought about themselves as a media company, but this is officially their jumpstart or however they want to look at it, the, their venture into the, the realm of the 21st century. So um, all these tools have been around. All of them have been around for years upon years. Um, so now it's, now it's time to really uh, take that into account and understand that, you know, you're going to be, that's why there's words like channel and broadcast and all these other things that are parts of the, the internet ecosystem now. Uh, and this is what the folks that built these tools are mm -hmm. talking about. And so, um, you know, so it's really not new, but at the same time, I understand that it's new to certain organizations and stuff like that, but uh, you gotta, gotta embrace it. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about where, where's somewhere, I mean, <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, lo I love, to me, I'm always looking for the hope in situations. And so as we embark on digital ministry and we may have some stumbles as, as a church, where do you think we can find hope or where do you think there is hope uh, uh, in digital ministry for the church? Well, I think, uh, you know, I kind of prefaced it at the beginning is the fact that you have this reach, you have this, this, uh, um, broadcasting soapbox that you can put out into the ether and you know it allows people um to embrace what you're saying and how you're saying it you know um and like you you said it you know the barrier to entry is low lower um to figuring out who you want to uh, you know talk with or or you know which which place you want to engage with what 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 speaks to you and it you don't you don't have to be in the place and that's another thing is it's like you know um church isn't ne necessarily the building it's it's the community that's created um and that's that's where i see the potential hope because we're actually using the tools and the technology and such that have been around for a while that the younger generation has grown up with. They don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the kids going into college now um, don't know a world without YouTube. And so, um, and now there's other aspects and it's just embracing all that to be able to not just use it to reach the young kids. It's not about that. It's about the communication and the conversation that you're trying to say and trying to do. Um, and that's what you're, and that's what, where I see the hope in is the yeah. fact that um, your messages doesn't have to be different. It's just a, a new way of, 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 yeah, displaying it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because it's, I mean, so yeah, yeah, it's like for far, probably too long even though our theology teaches us different, we've thought about the building as that central hub of, and that is the church. And this really is helping us decenter that idea and, and get back to what we actually teach and proclaim that the community is, I mean, the, you know, the church is the people. Um, and this definitely uh, helps us see that and helps us connect with more people. So yeah, no, I like that. Um, so, you know, we were talking a little bit just a second ago that it might require some new volunteers and different roles and everything. What are a couple of those roles that, that 
uh, churches should be thinking about right now that they, you know, what new worship leaders, if you will, that they may not have in place or haven't worked with before, what are a couple you might, that you suggest they consider adding? Oh boy, I don't even know where to start. I mean, you've got to have, you know, obviously somebody who can um, run the live streams as a producer um, or a technical director, however you want to want to put it. Um, and then you obviously will have to have at least a camera person or somebody um, working the camera. Uh, if, if, or that can be the same person because there's, there's some churches that have uh, mechanized camera systems that go into um, a device that goes to the live streaming. I, I don't want to get super technical on yeah. this. I mean, people can email me to ask me more technical questions on that. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you can email him and get more technical <laughs> answers. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Paul. I, I, no, I talk about this stuff all the time. So it wouldn't be any, any different any, anywhere else. So, I mean, that's those are a couple of positions right off the bat to, to, to understand that, as well as, you know, um, for those that, um, use uh, presentation software, uh, you know, media shout, stuff like that, having that as another position, as well as, you know, maybe having somebody on staff that's beyond the, the soundboard person that can help with, you know, podcasting and, and developing that and having a digital uh, uh, or a social media or digital media person that handles the uh, um some of the YouTube uploads and all that other stuff. I mean, these are, these are things that have to be really, it sounds like I'm saying, well, you're just trying to find fun positions. It's not about fun anymore. It's about practicality and, um, you know, and getting that message out. This isn't, this isn't about um, fun. This is, this is how the, the world moves. These are actual positions that are, are technically paid in the real world, but you can have, you can um, go through your congregation and find, and it's not just about, you know, well, let's find the teenager that understands technology. It's not about that either, because these are folks, there's people in these professions, I can speak on that as a professional in that industry that can provide these, these, the, this help for the churches but yeah i mean there's a plethora of of different positions that can be filled voluntarily or paid staff yeah. um, and that's not about you know going to your youth pastor and going hey you work with young people here's technology fix it you know that's not the that <laughs> that's not the right way to go about it because i mean just because your youth pastor may work with younger people doesn't mean that they're automatically technically apt um that's not fair or that, they, or that they want to you know maybe they, exactly maybe they exactly. know about it but their, their, <laughs> their gift is totally different so yeah no i agree with that that's because i get i hear a lot of times from some churches we just got to find somebody that knows tech and i'm just like well I, I that always gets the hair on my neck to stand up a little bit because i think it's more about you need to set some goals and objectives and then maybe you need to consult with somebody like Paul here outside of your congregation that is a professional that'll help you define the tech you're really going to need. And then you can either go recruit volunteers because now you've worked with somebody like Paul that helps you make a to-do list so that they can just X, Y, Z this. And then you can teach people that really, you know, I think a lot of times with the technology, especially when we start doing it week in and week out and we develop systems, it is not that hard for somebody that's not afraid of technology to learn. As right. long as they're not, I mean, there are people that just technology overwhelms them. That's fine. We'll find another role for them. But there's some people that was like, I may not know how to do it, but if you show me what buttons to hit when, I'll learn, you know? And so then to me, the church, we're better off. What are some of our goals? Let's find some professionals that we can consult with and, you know, come up with a plan. Then we can go to our team. And that's going to be set you up for much more success than if you just said, hey, you're young, you know, YouTube go do it. And, and even if that young person is good, what are you going to do when they go off to college? Because you yes. skip the whole plan, you skip the whole planning phase and uh, you just, you know, you put it on one person or you potentially set that young person up for failure because they don't really have enough guidance. They may know to YouTube, but what do they know about worship leadership or what do they know? You know, it wasn't really a partnership. Anyways, that's, 
we agree on that, as you might, as you can tell. I, it is a soapbox that I get on quite often with churches. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the young people can do it, or, or we just need to find somebody that knows tech. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, it's and true. Then, like, it's well, hard. Tech, like as a professional yourself, you know that tech is like this huge spectrum. You know what I mean? It's like, yes. like I know a ton about websites, but please don't ask me any of your IT questions. I don't know <laughs> anything about it. well. I know enough to be to cause trouble probably about IT, you know, it's like, so it's even tech is a huge spectrum and there's a lot of subspecialties. So, yes. yeah, yeah. So as you know, the church has kind of caught up to where the world was almost 10 years ago, technologically wise, as far as, I mean, you know, all the video and, you know, YouTube and, you know, the phones have been around for 13 mm -hmm. or 14 years, you know, we're, we're kind of catching up there. What, do you think the church may, you know, as you dream and think about what's possible, where, where, what do you think will look like in five or 10 years from now, as far as digital ministry is concerned? Well, I would like to see uh, churches in general have, you know, the, the live streaming slash camera, all that stuff in place. And as part of their whole ecosystem, um, as part of, uh, you know, because what you can do is really start broadcasting more than one time a, a week as well. Um, you can also do s certain stuff like that. And so, so, I mean, I think that that's what I would like to see is those positions and those um, uh, that quote unquote technology in place in all churches, regardless of um, uh, you, if you're going back in person or not. Well, if you're not, yeah, you got to have these things in place. But if you once you start getting more in person, but just having these these situations in which you can build on because you've already started this uh, journey down the road. So don't just stop and say, OK, I'm just going to plant my my flag here and we're good. It doesn't work that way. And so um so it, it, it's about getting that messaging out. And that's what I would, that's my well, hope. It's kind of like now that we've gained this much expertise, how can we use it in another application? You know, how can we keep growing and keep using it and keep kind of pushing uh, into new ways to share the gospel? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that sounds good. Um, so I don't know if this is something you, I heard through the grapevine through a mutual friend we have that you might be working on, um, some training or something like that for later this summer for churches uh is that i don't know if that's something you're ready to talk about i didn't ask you beforehand i'm sorry but if it is something that you'd like to share uh i would be happy for you to share with our listeners or we'll just cut this part out <laughs> well, well i can all i can say is yes we will be uh, uh, that yeah the mutual friend of ours did mention to, that she talked about this and so yeah this, this is something that we we're working on um, I'm not sure if she's ready for me to say more than what's been said but but yeah so we are collaborating on on um, uh, doing some type of broad consulting for churches in both the creative and technical aspects of getting their worships tightened, getting their worships online, and, and working with them as we go forward into the many years post, well, I don't want to say, I don't want to put the post-pandemic thing out there, but um, whether it's, uh, um, you know, doing, doing that situation. So, so there's stuff coming. So just, uh, yeah. just be forewarned. <laughs> well, I, I will just mention that uh, our mutual friend is Don Trotman, and she was a guest. <laughs> She was, a guest, I, she was a guest on the podcast uh, uh, several weeks ago. So if you did not listen to that episode, I would highly recommend you go listen to that episode after you finish this episode with uh, Paul. Um, but, but be on the lookout for, uh, for more, uh, for some, some good opportunities. Because I think, because between Don and Paul, you got a wealth of expertise and they can really help your church uh, uh, do good in kind of this new hybrid worship model that a lot of us are going to be heading into. So be on the Absolutely. lookout for that. The last I heard is something this summer, maybe. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yep, the exactly. launch is coming. The launch yes. is coming. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for sharing what you could on that. I, yep. I mainly wanted you to share because I know it's going to be a valuable resource uh, for our listeners. So, and maybe when y'all get it going, we'll just have to have both of y'all back on together and we'll talk about it. 
would uh, love to. I would love to. And it was interesting because, uh, you know, when I, when t- I approached Don about this, we were working in kind of like those, those bubbles, a tech in a more creative yeah. aspect. And I saw her doing, I was like, Don, this is what's happening in my world. How can we, you know, combine what we're both doing? She's like, I love this idea. So, so we've been working at that. So we are looking for to launch uh, in the summer, uh, summer ish um, time frame, And so, so I'm excited um, uh, to, to have this collaboration. Well, that is all the time we have for today. So I want to say thank you, Paul, for being a guest on how we do digital ministry. Okay. Um, I'd like to invite all of our listeners to make sure that they follow us uh, in their favorite podcast uh, app or on YouTube. Make sure they subscribe to our channel. Uh, Paul, how can our listeners find you online? Well, I always say pe- they, I always say to people, if you can't find me online, you are not looking. You can find me on all the social media, both my company and myself. Uh, I'm Paul J. Schmidt on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all that stuff, as well Instagram, as well as uh, my company, Introduce Multimedia. And you can see all the great things that we're doing uh, with that as well. You see your follow his company right now. They're highlighting uh, videos from the last year. What is this competition? I don't know exactly. I just been watching the videos. What is the competition y'all are doing? Oh, it's our own. Uh, it's called the Ducey Awards. Okay. And so what we do is we take the videos we've launched to our channels between April first of the previous year. It goes April first to April first, and then we take we take those and we have four categories. Uh, it's most informational, most entertaining, most inspirational and most outstanding so a better a best video of the year we've been doing it for nine years this was something that came up with (laughs) an intern of mine came up with this nine years ago and uh, we've just carried it forward and so we're we're in the third week of the votes on that and we've had uh had some good responses so excited I've enjoyed watching the videos as I see you share them. Um, so yeah, you also go follow him online and you can see uh, the videos that he helps produce uh, with his company. Um, so anyways, I want to thank each and every one of our listeners for listening today. We'd love to connect with you in other ways too. Uh, we have a private Facebook group called, imagine this, it is called How We Do Digital Ministry. So you don't have to wait a whole another seven days for the next episode of the show. You can discuss all things digital ministry uh, in between shows. In the show notes will be the link. We'd love for you to join uh, that Facebook group and be a part of the community uh, as we learn and grow in all things digital ministry. Um, So once again, thank you for being here and thank you for, thank you for being here, Paul. And thank you for listening. Blessings to you all. 